this. Um, we're so excited for the call today. So before we get into it, I want to give you a quick introduction of what we've got going on because this is a call you're going to be very glad that you jumped on considering some circumstances that are surrounding us in the world today. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce two amazing people that we have on the call tonight. Um, the first being Miss Deanna Latson, who, as you well know, is our chief product officer for Rx. Everybody say hello to Deanna, give her one of these big old waves, right? Um, you guys, if you haven't met Deanna in person, I think most of you have, but she is just an absolutely amazing person. Uh, has a wealth of experience, a wealth of knowledge in the health and wellness industry, but more than that, she is an advocate for individuals. She's an advocate for individual uh, mental health, physical health, everything, right? Um, Deanna has been a wonderful friend to me. She's a wonderful friend, wonderful friend to everybody as an individual. Um, she is a highly sought after public speaking individual motivator. And I don't know if you know how lucky we are to have her as a part of our team, but all of us should be counting our blessings to have Deanna as a part of our team. She's going to be sharing some amazing stuff tonight about uh, really raw ingredients and vitamins um, and how diet, lifestyle, these ingredients can help us um have a significant impact on our health okay uh, so we're very excited to have her tonight along with her we also have dr ray strand and ray strand is amazing right you've got over 30 years 30 years in the medical industry and he still looks not a day over 35 so i don't know how that works out right <laughs> the math just doesn't work but you know what um i've known ray i've known dr strand for a long time. Um, I've been able to see him and follow his work for a long time. And then personally, over the past probably seven years, I've gotten to know him. Dr. Strand has not only helped me as an individual, he's helped my family as well. And I've got some a lot of personal gratitude for this man, a lot of personal gratitude in my heart. Um, Dr. Strand started his practice in the family practice and kind of in the uh, diagnosing and treating illnesses, right? But throughout his time in, this, in, in, in his field of work, he really noticed and said, it's, it's backwards to be treating these illnesses. We need to be into the preventative medicine, into trying to stop getting sick, right? It's not about getting sick and treating it. It's about how we stop getting sick. So tonight, you've got some amazing information coming your way from both of these two wonderful speakers. Um, make sure that you're taking notes. Make sure that you're soaking in this information um, because really it is life-changing information on how we can change our lives from what we put into our bodies, our lifestyles, even our attitudes. It all has a, a huge significant um, impact on our lives and our well health and well-being. So without further ado, I want to bring onto the call Deanna Latson and Dr. Ray Strand. Deanna? Hey, hey. Can you hear me okay? We got you. Wow, you look fantastic for 1 a.m. Looking all sharp yeah. and good looking there. Like, got yourself together. I would not look that good at 1 a.m., I got to tell you. <laughs> it's a new sweater, but I got to tell you, okay, this lighting and this setup that you have is spot on. Thanks. I'm standing. I realize like it's so hard for me to sit and talk because I'm so like such a mover, you know, and so I've, I've got a whole standing situ like set up now, you know, I feel That's confined awesome. when I sit. So I might be more animated than usual. Well, good. Well, thank you. I'm going to turn the time over to you and let's rock and roll with this thing. Awesome. Well, thank you, Cameron, for such a wonderful introduction. And Dr. Strand, you know, welcome to the call. And and I don't know about you guys, but I'm in California and we're like on lockdown. It's like prison in our homes. So uh, we, we're we talking a lot and we're reading a lot and um, a lot of things are being said. And so tonight we have a really great call about just general health and well-being and immune health and well-being. And I have spent my entire 
career on this subject. This is what I've been doing, right? Before, you know, I joined uh, the company as a co-founder, Rx, I was speaking all over the world, helping people understand basic principles. If you want to live to 100, you know, and not be super sick, but actually be pretty vibrant, there's things that lots of people have in common. So tonight we're going to talk about some of those things. And we're going to talk about different foods and different types of vitamins and supplements that are great for your immune system during stressful times and just things you can do as, as a family and together with your friends to boost that immune system. Well, I guess before we start, what might be really helpful is everybody says the word immune system, but what is the immune system? System. Like Dr. Strand, what is the immune system? Well, Deanna, thank you for having me here. Uh, welcome everybody to this call and this Zoom. Uh, we really appreciate being able to share the information we've had. Uh, as as uh, Cameron said, I'm a family physician, so I've been uh, on both sides of the coin. For the first half of my medical career, I was disease oriented and drug oriented. I was your typical physician. But uh, midway through my career, I realized that it was better that we try to prevent disease or allow people to maintain their health and protect their health rather than just to treat it. So this is what my research has done. And we want you to understand the immune system is your great protector. It's as simple as that. Uh, we've created this great immune system that protects us against foreign invaders. Uh, it could be bacteria, it could be viruses, it could be a foreign body, it could be uh, anything, but our immune system is always out there checking for self and non-self. In other words, it's out there checking for normal cells, uh, normal things, and if it finds something abnormal that's not self, then it attacks and destroys it. Primarily, in, this, in our visit tonight, we're talking about viruses and bacteria primarily, uh, because that's, that's your great protector. This is the thing, you know, there's no real treatment for a lot of these viruses and even some bacteria. So the best defense against all of this is building up your body's natural immune system and have a healthy immune system, because if it is unhealthy, or compromised, or you have, uh, you know, that it's not functioning in all cylinders, then you're more vulnerable to these infections. And if you do become infected, you, that is the most dangerous situation when someone has what we call a compromised immune system. So to make it simple, your immune system is your great protector. And we're here to share with you how you can optimize and create a healthy immune system. Awesome. Okay, here we go. We're going to start with the first tip and we're going to talk about the mind body connection because actually the mind body connection is fascinating. And there's much been studied on the subject to the point where positive expectations can lower, can equal almost like a shot of morphine sometimes. So there's there's many things that can be done with the mind when you study the mind. And I want to share an extreme example with you but one that I love. A group of researchers from Harvard University, it was led by Dr. Herbert Benson, were first, they got approval by the Dalai Lama to go study the Tibetan monks. And so they left to go study the Tibetan monks and what they figured out really quickly is that they could actually control the temperature of their skin through meditation. So what happened was the Dalai Lama agreed for them to go to a very, um, um, a remote monastery in the Himalayan mountains. And what they discovered is they, they went up into the Himalayan mountains. They, scientists got a chance to document these monks spending the night out on a rocky ledge in the Himalayas. And the monks were dressed in simple robes with no insulation, slept on the cold rocks separated from each other. The altitude was 15,000 feet. The temperatures reached zero and they slept apparently comfortable throughout the night. And what was really interesting is all the researchers who were all bundled up videoing it were shivering and cold. 
you know? And then they brought the monks back into the monastery. They, they did research on them as they were meditating and found that they could dramatically affect their core body temperature just through meditation. Now, let's be clear. I don't want you running out to the Himalayas to lay on rocks to freeze to death because we might just not be there yet. I don't know that I'm there yet. However, I use that as an example to demonstrate that the mind-body connection is gigantic and there is so much that comes with it. I'll never forget Dr. Bernie Siegel, who's a friend of mine who wrote Love, Medicine, and Miracles. And he started to document the difference between terminal patients and those who had positive expectations. And the positive expectations were undeniably those patients um, had different results. And he, some of his stories are beautiful. It's a great book if you ever want to read a really good book called Love, Medicine, and Miracles. But my suggestion here is to remind yourself positive expectations and to journal, especially during times of stress or crisis, about what you're grateful for. You know, because we all have so much to be grateful for and we can live in so much gratitude. And all of that can have such an, an, an amazing impact on your health and well being. So ask yourself, what am I letting into my mind? And a very good exercise that a lot of people never think about is what are three things, negative things you're letting into your mind that you can stop letting into your mind? Like actually ask yourself that question and make a plan. What three things can I cut out from my daily mind activity? Because I promise you that will have a profound impact on your immune system. So, and, and even if you don't believe it right at first, talk to yourself different. I tell my kids every time, I said, your cells are listening. You talk to yourself, your cells are listening because your body's talking to your cells, your mind is talking to your cells. So folks, remember, your mind-body connection is real. Stay grateful. Rem ask yourself, what negative things can I release from my mind and stop letting in daily can have a big um, impact on your life. You know, the next thing I want to talk about, because I've been reading a lot, which is so interesting, Dr. Strand, I can't wait to get your take on this. But in a Spanish flu outbreak of 1918, it was really interesting. It's one of the most devastating pandemic on record. It killed so many people. And what was interesting about this is that their records show that a hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, they did a open air hospital. And what is so interesting when you read back on this records and what a lot of the researchers say is that some of the patients and staff were spared the worst of the outbreak. And there is medical evidence to suggest the combination of fresh air, sunlight, of course, scrupulous hygiene, had actually reduced the deaths amongst some patients and among the medical staff. So getting out, getting to the sun, getting some fresh air. So Dr. Strand, tell me a little bit about sun, vitamin D, and its role it has on, on disease in the body. Well, let's talk about vitamin D. You know, it is one of the nutrients that is very profound in helping our immune system. I reviewed probably 15 major clinical trials over the last 18 months just on vitamin D itself. And what they found is when you have the higher levels of vitamin D, and this is something we're le we've learned since uh, 2000, you know, and beyond, that we were getting too little vitamin D. Now it's called, you know, the, the sun vitamin, and you know we get it. But a lot of people, we live in climates where you don't get as much sun. Uh, we don't we don't get the levels we need. So we need to be on the highest levels. But these studies show that if you just got the average levels that are reported on lab tests, you did not have much protection against viral diseases. However, if you got in the higher levels, which is where we recommend in taking like 2,000 to 4,000 international units of vitamin D3, the most potent vitamin D, that you can reduce all viral infections by over 50%. Now that's amazing, 50%. So when you talk, Deanna, about getting sun, and being out in the sun, uh, the vitamin D levels go up very much because that's what it's manufactured in the skin when, when, when you have sun exposure. But you can now supplement with vitamin D3 and, and it's critical. So it has a tremendous 
uh, effect not only on your immune system, but in just preventing these viral diseases. You're muted. You're muted, Dion. You're muted, Deanna. Do you want to unmute? You can't unmute, huh? Well, maybe Cameron can help you. Well, do you want me to keep talking while you figure that out? <laughs> there, whoops. Okay, here we go. Here we go. No, I'm like, no, I like to talk. It's my turn to talk. Give me the mic back. <laughs> well, unmute. <laughs> okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so listen, Dr. Strand is right. And a really another thing is to make sure I know it's like summer in Australia. We have a lot of our Australian friends on here is we're not talking about going out and getting sunburned, but getting some good fresh air, some sun on your body is really good. We don't have to worry about our friends in Ireland like Cam, they never get sun. So uh, no worries there. But remember on cloudy lack of sun days, it is critical for vitamin D and not only for like viral bacterial issues are hormones. We know it plays a really critical role on our uh, hormonal health too. So watch that folks. Okay, let's talk about some of our eating habits right now. I love this topic. It is my topic of choice. What food do you eat? Um, and, and I think it's really critical. This is the time and a really good excuse for any parents out there with kids to revamp the pantry, folks, to take a look and then ask yourself, what type of processed foods do I have in my house that's kick the, you know, should kick to the curb? What um, sugars do I have in the house that can kick to the curb? And a good rule of thumb I like in my house is, let's not bring sugary treats in the home. Let's have to go out and get them as a treat. Well, right now we can't go anywhere. So the benefit of that, there's no sugar. But why is that key? This is why it is key. Eating or drinking 100 grams, which is about eight tablespoons of sugar, equivalent to about two cans of soda, researchers now suggest that it can reduce the ability of your white blood cells to kill germs by up to 40 to 50%. And the immune suppressing effect of sugar starts less than 30 minutes after ingestion and may last up to five hours. In contrast, when researchers looked at like complex carbohydrates, it did not have an effect on the immune system. So when we're talking about immune health, when we're talking about overall well being, sugar should hit the door, folks. You know, during any time of crisis, any time when you're not feeling good, it is not good to go to those types of foods because you literally are negatively affecting your immune system. Well, why would you do that? You know, that's not, that's no good. And Dr. Strand is muted as well. We have to get him unmuted. Uh, and so he can, he's got something to say. He's muted. I can just, oh, there he's not. Anyway, Deanna, I want to just share something on the vitamin D issue because we're talking to so many Australians tonight. Oh, okay. We're back on vitamin D. Oh, just, okay. just real quick. No just problem. Real quick. That's what, but what, what we found is that, you know, you, when you go out in the sun, you get 95% of the vitamin D in the first 15 minutes of sun exposure. So first of all, you don't have to get sunburn if you want to get out. And, and so then you can put on your sunscreen and all that. But that's, that's a good thing. The second thing is they did a major study on lifeguards in Australia. And they found that 50% of them were deficient in vitamin D. So we therefore need to be supplementing even with the sun exposure because this, this was a very major uh, study. And so I just wanted to bring that up and I'm gonna turn it back to you now that I'm unmuted, I won't touch it, and then let you continue. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no problem. So, hey, the importance of vitamin D on the body. Um, and I, I really wish I could come into your homes and go into your pantries and help clean out the sugar. So look at your ketchup, ketchups, look at your sauces, look at your salad dressing, you know, tomato sauce. Is that what it's called in Australia? Or is it ketchup? I don't know. It's, it is tomato sauce, maybe. 
or ketchup, whatever. But a lot of your, your ketchups have more sugar in it than ice cream, people. So take a look at these things and use the current world situation to tell your kids, I'm sorry, the World Health Organization says it's so bad for us right now, no sugar in the home. And then your kids can't blame you. Use a third party to blame it on and, and it will improve everybody's well-being, I promise you. Okay, let's talk about exercise and the immune system. Listen, I, I, have, an, I have an aversion to the gym. It's, I'm going to admit it here. It's like I'm in, like, I don't know. I, I just need to just let you all know I have an aversion to the gym. I don't like it. However, I do like to get moving. I like to go to the beach. I like to go on hikes. I like to go on walks. I like to do all of those sorts of things. We know that regular exercise improves your overall health and it boosts your immune system. So no matter what you're doing, even like what I'm doing, like I'm standing instead of sitting during this meeting right now, right? And Dr. Strand, if you could just touch on just briefly the importance of exercise in the immune system. Well, you know, I've always believed in a triad of healthy lifestyles. And I've always recommended a healthy diet. You know, we don't want to be supplementing a poor diet. But also, I believe in a consistent, modest exercise in all my patients. And aerobic activity is more important, uh, not that it replaces, you know, weight resistance training. But you do not have to be a superstar. What they find is that if you simply do uh, aerobic activity, modest, for 30 minutes, five days a week, it significantly improves not only our health, our immune system, our blood pressure, weight control, all of that. So it could be walking briskly, 30 minutes, five times a week, uh, swimming, biking, hiking, you know, anything like this, get the body moving. But there is, there's some emotional, mental things you talked about, uh, you know, mental activity. There's a natural relaxation response following activity. You just can't get as uh, as uh, uh, excited about things or stressing. So exercise is very, very important and it should be part of a healthy lifestyle. Wouldn't it be so fun if we all gathered again on the call together and we were just like, okay, everybody, jumping jacks, let's go. Come on, keep it together. Like I can be up for that, right? Totally, let's move our bodies a little bit, right? Shake it out for a second. Hey, I think we should have an Australian exercise class. Cam will run it for us at 1 a.m. because it's quiet in this house. So let's talk about a few other like essentials for the immune system. I personally have read so much research, validated research on the import of vitamin C, grape seed extract, um, supplementation like that. Um, that's also found in our foods, but we can take additional for additional support. And Dr. Strand, you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Let's talk about vitamin C. Uh, that was the first one that was really studied uh, mainly by Linus Pauling out of the Pauling Institute. And I mean, he used significant uh, levels of vitamin C and he used them alone. And you're going to hear later as I talk about, uh, we want the synergistic effect of putting all these together. The problem is that we do our studies on one nutrient at a time. That's just how we study nutritional supplements. We'll study vitamin D or we'll do calcium or magnesium or we'll do selenium or vitamin C, vitamin E. Uh, and, and amazingly, in these studies, 90% of the time, just studying one nutrient in supplementation shows a health benefit. But vitamin C has been shown not only over long term to build up your immune system, but if you actually are having an infection, taking a vitamin C can be very, very effective in decreasing the severity and the length of the illness. This is pretty well established in the medical literature. But there is a nutrient that I believe is even more potent and more powerful, especially if used with vitamin C because they work synergistically, and that's grapeseed extract. Grapeseed extract has a several tremendous uh, qualities to it. Number one, it's, a, it's the most potent antioxidant uh, that we know today. It's 50 times more potent than vitamin E, and it's 50 times more potent than vitamin C. And it penetrates all the fluids in the body and the brain, the eyes, uh, you know, throughout, you know, the, the all tissues in the body. But it also is a natural anti-allergen. We all deal with allergies, we all struggle. 
and it does affect our lungs, hay fever, uh, asthma, uh, all of these things that we do. Grapeseed extract being a natural anti-allergen over time, uh, especially if you're taking it daily as part of a healthy lifestyle, really makes a difference uh, in, in building up uh, your body against allergens. And I've always learned in my medical practice that when people are coming in struggling with allergies, especially serious allergies, it's the first sign of a depleted immune system. So we need to build that up. Another characteristic of grapeseed extract is it's a natural anti-inflammatory. Now, inflammation is major in all illnesses, especially viral illnesses. And right now, we know these respiratory viruses, uh, you know, they do, they can cause an upper respiratory infection, but the seriousness is when it gets into the lower respiratory system into the lungs. And a propensity of the pande pandemic we're dealing with right now is, is it, it, it's the lower respiratory system that is the most dangerous. Well, grapeseed extract is a natural anti-inflammatory and my patients do so well uh, by being on it. And what we find is that everybody should be taking, you know, a high quality grapeseed extract, 100 to 2 milligrams, uh, at least 200 milligrams daily. But if you're exposed to a viral infection or you actually are getting one, the nice thing about grapeseed extract is the fact that it's very, very safe. You can take tremendous amounts and still be in a very safe range. So many people will four times it, six times it, 10 times it when they're ill. And it does have an effect, especially if that grapeseed extract is combined with high quality vitamin C. So it is one of my really key nutrients that builds the immune system, is a tremendous antioxidant, but it's also a natural anti-allergen and an anti-inflammatory. Thanks for that. And it's also something that I, um, what I call therapeutically dose, I take more whenever I think my family's in any type of crisis. So like if they get exposed to a cold or a flu or something, I end up giving more of that, um, especially if you're taking like the buffered form of vitamin C. So in the sorbate or whole food forms of vitamin C, it doesn't cause stomach upset. So those are all really great for the body, for you, your family, your loved ones. Okay, now back on lifestyle, away from nutrients for a minute, wanna talk about laughter, okay? And laughter's effect on the body. Right now, there's I don't know, so much happens. There's great things happening in humanity. People can still have daily humor, but there's also a lot of stress. And with stress, comes a compromised immune system. Stress is very hard to define because for some people, you know, they get stressed out for some things and other people get stressed out for other things, you know? Um, and so, but I do want you to know that the, let's stop taking ourselves all so serious and have a little fun because laughter is so critical on the body. This is not the time to watch the blockbuster Hollywood movie called Contagion, which I did, is a very bad <laughs> idea. I just wanna let you know. I watched it with my daughter and the entire time I was like, oh my God. And I just felt my entire body getting you know, all tense and I thought, well, that was stupid, right? So stupid, now it makes you laugh, so I've made you healthier and I made me worse. But nonetheless, don't do stupid things like that. I do want you to know, researchers have studied laughter. They now know, the University of Maryland studied and they showed its effect on blood vessels when people were at comedies versus people watching a drama. And what's so in interesting is that people at comedies, like I, they all behaved normally, expanding, contracting easily, but blood vessels and people who watch the drama tended to tense up, actually restricting blood flow. Oh, of course, right? It makes so much logical sense. What else? They also studied the immune response and increased stress associated with decreased immune system response. Studies have shown the ability to use humor actually raises your infection fighting antibodies in the body and boosts the level of immune cells as well. Well, I think, well, that's all super positive, right? Time to look at comedies, folks, comedies, fun stuff, you know? And if you don't think I'm funny, I don't care, right? Go find someone who you do think is funny. There's a lot of funny people out there. Here's another interesting thing about laughter if you don't believe me. One study of, of, of a group of diabetics looked at the effect of la laughter on blood sugar levels. And after eating, the group attended like a really boring lecture. 
by someone not like me and Dr. Strand. And, and, uh, and then the next day, the group ate the same meal and watched a comedy. And after the comedy, the group had lower blood sugar levels than they did after the boring letter, lecture by somebody not like Dr. Strand or I. And so it, just the effect on your environment can affect so many parts of your body, the mind-body connection, right? Also know this that there was they they've also shown that just 10 minutes of laughter can give you almost two hours of pain free issues it was studied on people who had a lot of pain and had problems sleeping so remember that laughing is a very good medicine so if you're all stressed out if you're like mad at your kids you know just try to laugh at yourself a little bit Watch comedy shows, surround you, yourself with people who make you laugh, um, and uh, don't, take, don't take yourself so serious. So, okay, enough with laughter. Let's get back to serious, but not boring. And let's talk about sleep and how critical sleep is and what happens when we sleep as far as immune function is concerned. So there's a reason why you feel sleepy when you're sick right? It's like a, an essential survival mechanism of the body. And so we know that sleeping is your body's way of taking time to repair itself. So what causes you to get sleepy? Well, we shut eye, sleep is necessary for both the mind and the body. It allows your downtime to restore cells, repair tissue, and works to help the brain consolidate um, and process information and actually learn. So, I mean, less sleep, you're dumber. So don't do that. Maybe, you know, sleep more, your, your, your IQ will go up. When peace, people um, miss sleep, they face all types of um, health challenges, both physical and mental. And so remember, when your body slows down and you're, you go into sleep, there are several automatic responses and immune defenses that get deployed during the sleeping process. So they perform these functions. First, encoding. And that's when your immune um, system is recognizing the foreign bacteria or virus and preparing for battle, right? Consolidation. That's when it's gathering information, consolidating information about foreign invaders. All this happens during sleep. And recall, flying this, filing this experience away, you know, um, recalls what's make people's immune system uh, getting to virus, you know, and like a chicken pox where you won't get ch chicken pox multiple times. So sleep is very critical. And how much sleep should we be getting? How much sleep should we be getting as an adult? And how much sleep should we be getting as a child? Dr. Strand, what do you tell your people in your practice? Well, I believe that sleep is probably one of the most misunderstood aspects of health in medicine. What we find, it's really, I use the word restoration. You know, it, it is repair, but when you're in sleep, there's a lot of things that happen that repair cells, damage, DNA, everything. But, but it's also restoration. And so many people who don't sleep effectively or have poor sleeping habits or don't sleep long enough or maybe too long, uh, they wake up what we call with non-restorative sleep. They, they just wake up as tired as they went to, to bed. And so this is critical issue and you need to work with it. And that's where exercise, eating a healthy diet, laughter, mindset, and all that is there, is there because at night, things tend to bother us. We have trouble sleeping. We have trouble uh, getting the rest we need and getting into that good quality sleep. You know, there are five levels of sleep. There's two levels of alpha, two levels of delta, and REM sleep. Well, REM is that, is that real deep dream sleep. And that's where most of our repair occurs and our restoration. So it is a critical part. And obviously your immune system comes up, but heart health, uh, just general health and just uh, well-being it is really uh, restored with high quality sleep. Remember, when your body is fighting off foreign invaders, right, it needs as much energy as possible. So if you're out gallivanting like a crazy person, then it provides an extra challenge for the immune system to gather up all those resources it needs to help you see, helps you heal. So the more energy you conserve when you're sick, the faster you can recover. So talking about energy and talking about cells 
and energy of the cells. Dr. Strand, let's talk about a nutrient that is like the energy spark of a cell. Well, let's talk about CoQ10. Uh, we now realize that CoQ10 is responsible for over 90% of the energy production in every cell. And it is very critical for all cells, but especially our high energy cells, like our heart muscle, our brain, and our immune system. Well, the sad thing is, as we age, especially as we get over 30, 35 each year, our CoQ10 levels tend to drop and we become depleted in CoQ10. If you're taking some of the most common drugs like statin drugs, yeah, they lower cholesterol, but they also lower your CoQ10 level. And this can be dangerous because I believe, and this is something I've written about and I've, I've talked about, is the most important nutrient for our immune system, the one that can build up and optimize and create that healthy immune system we all want is CoQ10. And you can take this in supplementation. The problem with CoQ10 is the fact that it's not absorbed very well. It's very difficult to absorb. And so different forms have come out and the oxidized ubiquinone form is very hard to absorb. You need fat to absorb it. And then it must be converted to the active form once it's even absorbed. And I do a lot of CoQ10 blood levels in my medical practice because in my patients who are immunocompromised, they're on chemotherapy, or they have heart failure because they're depleted in CoQ10 in their, in their heart muscle. Uh, I'm doing blood levels because I want them as, as high as we, as we can. And I had so much difficulty uh, using this ubiquinone form. So what I have found in the medical literature is we have a new form called the ubiquinol, N-O-L, ubiquinol form. That is the active form of CoQ10. And what we're finding uh, now that it's been purified and, and is high quality, that you can actually absorb that five to 10 times greater than the ubiquinone form. So since I have switched in my medical practice using the ubiquinol form, I can get these blood levels with much less uh, amount of CoQ10. But CoQ10 is, is a critical, uh, holistic approach to your immune system. It builds up your, your, you know, your T4 killer cells and macrophages, as you're going to talk, the Pac-Man that's eating up everything. It's, it, it, it affects everything. Your white cells come up, they're more active. It, you produce antibodies quicker. And to me, uh, it is another one that can be used therapeutically. But generally, the longer you're on this, your immune system builds up. And remember, that's what I do as a physician. I want people to have a, a healthy immune system and, and, and prevent med medical problems before you get sick. So taking a dose of around 100 milligrams is very critical just on a daily basis. But if you do become ill, it is another nutrient that is very safe and has a wide margin of safety. You can increase it to therapeutic levels and take, you know, two, three, 400 milligrams if you get sick, and it does help. Just like the, the grapeseed extract, it, it can be used at therapeutic levels. But to me, it is absolutely the most potent supplement, in, in, and it's been documented in the medical literature, in boosting our immune system. Yeah, I mean, if I could only choose two, I would, ubiquinol would be one of those that I was choosing because I'm older, Older-ish, <laughs> and um, and as you get past a certain age, around forty or so, your natural levels start to decline in the body, and there's a direct correlation with like inside of the aging of the inside of the body with the decrease of ubiquinol in the cell. So. It's really great, uh, especially during times of stress. It's great in general. It's it's my go-to. Um, and talking about natural killer cells, macrophages, those are the 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 Pac-Mans of the body that go through and like as your garbage collectors clean it all up. There's a few other things that I love that fall that really have the ability to activate the body in that way. And it's mushrooms. The beta glucan proteins found in mushrooms 
can have such a positive effect on the body. Mataki mushroom being one of the strongest and best for that. The beta glucan proteins can activate your macrophages. It's basically like running up to your macrophages, like get your butt to work, you know, let's do this. But there's many other mushrooms that can fall into the medicinal category that's been used for literally hundreds of years all over the world. And so, and they're, they're usually the mushrooms, we're not necessarily using culinary, but you can find them. They can be readily available. You can order powders, you can find them in different products, but lion's mane, mataki, shiitake, you know, those are all really good mushrooms. And if you just start looking into the history and the antiviral effects and the ability of those mushrooms to have such a positive benefit on your cells, you will be amazed when you start looking into that history. So there is a lot of strength in mushrooms. I find them, in, I, I put mushrooms into the medicinal um, category, absolutely. Um, all right, let's, oh, another thing I put in the medicinal category is um, turmeric, you know, and I use a lot of turmeric. There's one thing you need to know about turmeric because it's, it's an excellent free radical scavenger as well. You know, in the body, I use turmeric all the time. I have a gigantic jar at home that I use. And um, the key to making turmeric even more beneficial in your body is make sure you have it with fats. So like if I make a turmeric latte, which I do with like coconut milk and turmeric and ginger and cardamom, it's like super yummy. Um, I make sure that I have fats in that. So a little bit of coconut oil or any type of fat that you might be having in, in your breakfast you know, that fats help that absorb into the body. Remember, some of these things can be tricky, and that's why it's good to know or what are other micronutrients and things you can take along with it to make them more benefit on the body. But I will tell you, um, uh, turmeric is, it, it, curcumin can be difficult to absorb, so put it in a healthy fat, like I said, before full digestion. Make sure it's in your stomach, some fats. Uh, otherwise, your digestive acids can destroy it and it loses its ability to do its job. Okay, let's also talk about water in the immune system. I mean, really, water is so critical. It's so easy to know if you're dehydrated. In the middle of the day, if your pee is anything more than light yellow, you're dehydrated. So take a look, people. Look down below and ask yourself, what color is my urine? And if your urine is more than light pale yellow, you're in trouble. So I did this lecture and I was at a preschool and this preschool is called Sandy Hill. And it's like this super awesome hippie preschool. There's like trees in the classroom, but it's up on a hill and the bathrooms are like all the way down the hill. So I went in, in with all these little kids, right? And I'm like, water, you know, the color of your urine. And I went through all the benefits of water, which are like, what are the benefits? It lubricates the joints and it forms saliva and a mucus and it boosts the skin. I mean, you look like a dried up grape if you're dehydrated, right? Uh, it cushions the brain. It's important for the brain. It regulates body temperature, the digestive system. You know, I went through all these things with the kids and I went on and on. Their little eyes got big, you know? And then the teacher calls me a week later. She's like, oh, your lecture was the worst thing ever. And I'm like, why? And she goes, because every 15 minutes, some kid in my class is, I got to go to the bathroom. And we're having to walk down the hill and walk all the way back up. I've had more exercise last week than I've had in a year. And I was like, oh, sorry. Sorry. She goes, yeah, these kids won't stop drinking water and they're peeing all day. But that's a great thing, folks. And your body will adjust. So as you start to increase more water in your life, it, you might have to go to the bathroom more often than not. But then your bladder gets used to it, just almost like working out a little bit. You can lift more weight and it's better, you know, it's easier for your body. But this is what I want you to know is um, water flushes waste from your body, literally flushes waste through the digestive system, right? And there is a lot of evidence to suggest that if your digestive system and stuff isn't flowing right, it's not, your immune system can be really, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Somebody just texted, it means more toilet paper. Like, holy crap, we're in trouble. More toilet <laughs> paper, you'll pee all the time, right? That is really funny. That was funny, made me laugh. Um, and so I really want you to know that water um, helps uh, nutrients get where they need to in the body, keeps your, you know, it's just critical for everything in the, it makes minerals and nutrients accessible in the body, you know, it prevent, can prevent kidney damage. I mean, Dr. Strand, what else would you say that I have not said? 
Well, I think that it's something I want to just focus just a little bit on nutritional supplementation, because this is what I've written about and talked about. You know, we've talked about individual nutrients all the way through, but what we find is I, pr I promote a concept called cellular nutrition. You know, what is that? Well, that's providing all of these essential nutrients at their optimal or advanced levels. Those are the levels that have been shown to provide a health benefit in our medical literature. Here's the reason you want to do that is vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin D, magnesium. These are not drugs. They're nutrients we get from our foods. But because we can supplement now, we can get them at levels you can't obtain from your food. And the medical literature is showing there is a health benefit for my patients and for you if you consume these at this high level. So it, it's good to try to put all of these together because they work together. There's a synergy that occurs. One plus one is not two or three, it becomes 20, 40, 60. But there is a health benefit for anybody who does consume what I call cellular nutrition. One is, yes, you optimize your body's natural antioxidant defense system, but these same nutritional supplements in our medical literature shows that you can optimize your body's natural repair system. But these same nutrients optimize your body's natural immune system, that we have a healthy immune system. It's not compromised, it's working on all cylinders. Now, I look at, you know, CoQ10 and grapeseed extract, vitamin D, and in some cases, magnesium is, is another good nutrient that I like because it helps my, the lung function. And, and creates healthy lung function. They all work together and they actually enhance one another. So in this difficult time, you know, when we're all trying to fight off all kinds of viruses, everything that we're looking at and bacterial infections, you, you wanna provide your body, uh, you know, with what I refer to as cellular nutrition. And I explain it in my books, we don't have time to go into detail of everyone, but they do work together, and it basically is consuming all these essential nutrients at their optimal advanced levels. Excellent. That is very good advice. Um, lots of us who are trapped at home need to also remember something, is that our indoor air quality can be way worse than outdoor air quality. I read the Australian governmental um, information on that, and even here in the United States, Here's, here's the thing, there's nothing in your home to break down and get rid of anything that's hanging around, right? Um, because we don't have wind and rain in our homes unless you're like camping or something, that's your home. But, but the reality is in your home, we don't have those things to break down bacteria, viruses, any of that in our home. So a really good rule of thumb when thinking about your home and, and, and what might be, you know, keep yourself from breathing in germs that are floating around the air is good air filtration or ventilation. Open those windows. Don't be afraid to sleep with the window open, folks. Like open the windows and let the air in and, and let air move through your house and so you don't have stagnant air. Have any of you ever seen stagnant water? Oh right? It can get rancid really fast. So think of your home air that way. So in the beautiful days you have, let it ventilate throughout your house it, um, because germs can remain airborne in homes for hours and hours. So, so, so let some fresh air in, let that happen. And um, yeah, just, just keep your, your house ventilated. Okay, so let's do a quick just review. Remember, positive expectations. The mind is just so powerful, right? Monks can sleep out in like freezing cold where none of us would survive just by their mind. Um, remember, the Spanish flu, those who are outside got vitamin D, fresh air. There was some research to suggest that maybe they didn't suffer as bad as so many of their other, uh, other folks who were not outside. So vitamin D is super critical. Um, remember your eating habits, sugar, you know? sugar should be kicked to the curb folks and it can lower your white blood cells ability to fight off virus bacteria and disease for up to like five hours and it starts within 30 minutes of ingestion remember exercise right 
let's like, like get your body moving, do something to get your body moving. You know, you don't like the gym like me. You don't have to go to the gym. Do something fun with your kids. Vitamin C, grapeseed extract, super, you know, important for the body. Um, ubiquinol, laughing. Don't take yourself so serious, you know, like have fun. Uh, uh, laugh at things that would normally irritate you. Sleep, critical for body rehab, for the body, you know, that's when it takes care of everything it needs to take care of. Keep your body hydrated, you know, good ventilation in your home. Medicinal mushrooms are fantastic. My favorite, as I, I mentioned before, is mataki. There's such good research to show that mataki activates those, the, the beta-glucan proteins activates those um, macrophages in your body. Those are the junk collectors of the body, you know? And, uh, and remember, as humans, right? We're all humans, no matter where we live. And remember to, to live in love and, and uh, help each other be... Uh, uh, stay positive and rem remind ourselves what we're grateful for. So, S Dr. Strand, what else would you say before we end this call for everybody just wanting to stay healthy? Well, my advice is we've talked about building up our body's natural defenses, but it's also protecting our body and our environment. It, you know, air, uh, surfaces, all of that. Hand washing is probably one of the key in preventing viruses. Uh, you know, what we find in medicine is, you know, we're seeing sick people every day. We're going in and out of rooms and everybody is, is sick and we're trying not to catch that. One thing we have learned is simply washing your hands with mild soap. You don't have to get fancy with sanitizers or that. I mean, if you have them, that's great. But washing your hands for 20 seconds, if you've been out in the public and you're around or, or that, when you get in, wash your hands, uh, protect it. Keep your hands away from your nose, your eyes, and your mouth. That's how it gains entrance. Uh, so all of these things are important, but if you do get sick, uh, you know, the thing is we feel that you're gonna do better even if you do catch a virus. And, and you're, this is what happens. The people who have a compromised immune system are always the ones who struggle the most with any of these kinds of infections. And so uh, take care of yourself, you know, really have optimal health and, and that healthy immune system. That's what we're looking for. So you know what I've been telling my son? I, I say, okay, when you wash your hands, you have to sing happy birthday and you can't, you can't, uh, you can't stop washing your hands until you've done happy birthday. And so, so it's a good way for young kids, right? To kind of put a time on it. Because when you say 20 seconds or something like that, they cheat all the time. But if you force them to actually sing the happy birthday song, which is just so joyful, how can you not be joyful around a happy birthday song? Um, then they'll wash their hands a little bit longer. So, um, okay, everybody. Mm, let's remind each other, like, uh, we're all here in this together. Stay grateful. And I'm going to turn it back over to Cam to wrap up this call. Cam is muted. We need Jim, the controller of controls, to unmute him. I was just singing happy birthday, getting ready to wash my hands, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, thank you so much for being on tonight's call. Uh, a ton of great information for us to take back, uh, not only to share with our families, to share with our loved ones, those around us. Remember, uh, some great things that we've learned tonight, incredible knowledge. One of the things that I'm taking away, I took notes for myself. Obviously, uh, one of the things that I've been doing is doubling up on my grapeseed extracts. Fantastic things to do. Um, but what I really took away tonight, and my, my main point is finding three things that I'm going to be kicking out of my life, right? Finding three negative things that I'm going to kick out. Um, I think that that's gonna be an amazing, amazing change for me. So take your notes. This is your action item. I want you to take two or three things from this call and figure out what you're going to implement today, whether that's better sleep, whether that's more water, whether it's doing what I'm doing, kicking those negative thoughts out of your mind, right? Take this, put it into your daily life. That's the only way that these calls have impact, right? Remember, we can listen all that we want, but make sure that you're finding three things tonight 
that you're going to implement today. And I want you all to report back to either myself or Jim, get ready for the emails to come in, Jim. What are those three things that you're going to do? Okay, I love it. Dr. Strand, thank you so much. Deanna, thank you so much. We love having you on these calls. You bring such, such great value. It was a brilliant call. So uh, thank you to everybody. Stay safe. Have a great evening, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Bye, everyone. Come with your jokes next time. Best joke who wins right. something. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone.